All right, those magnets were pretty cool, right? But what if I told you this board also has gel gasket mounts? Yeah, pretty dope. I'm Hippio Tech, and today we're gonna be looking at the Type Master 180. First things first, this board is a prototype and was sent to me for review. So things might be a little bit different than the final version. Also, as a channel that generally focuses on budget builds, this is my first experience with the high-end board. However, everyone has to start somewhere, and if I make any mistakes, I'm sure y'all will let me know in the comments. Anyways, this board was designed and engineered in France by Typemaster. It feels incredibly luxurious, and the unboxing experience definitely mirrors that. The box had magnets on it. That's pretty cool, especially because the board has magnets on it. Anyways, it was packaged really well with foam, and I don't think you'll have any issues with shipping. Now you might be wondering when you can get this board, and to be honest with you, I don't know. The group buy hasn't gone live yet, and there's no set dates in stone. But I would stay tuned to the Typemaster website, as they said they want to get it started soon. Currently the board is priced at 429 euros with an aluminum weight, or 479 with a stainless steel weight. This means it's definitely on the pricier side, but it is a high-end board. It comes in 8 different color combinations, and has some of the nicest color combos that I've seen on a group buy. I personally have the silver and blue combo, which got voted the least favorite color on a geek hack poll, but I don't think it's that bad. As you saw in the intro, this board uses magnets, and features a completely screwless design. The board opens and closes entirely with magnets, and I'll show you that more later. One of the first things I noticed about this board was how ridiculously heavy it is. I got the stainless steel weighted version, and it was 2500 grams, or around 5.63 pounds, for you Americans. I'd say the best way to describe the Type Master is it feels powerful. The top and bottom pieces are both anodized aluminum, and the Type Master logo is actually the stainless steel weight poking through a cutout. Now if you have a clever eye, you might have noticed that my board already came built. This is because it was a prototype, and I didn't personally have the time to build it on stream, so Type Master built it up for me. I'll talk a little bit more about the build later, but essentially it's what I would have built it out with myself. Once we have the top plate off, here's where things start to get a little bit interesting. You can see the magnets in the top plate, as well as the gel pads. A really nice perk is that Typemaster will pre-install these for you, so you won't have to worry about installing the gaskets yourselves. Now, the magnets are a bit of a gimmick, but do make the screwless design look nice, but the gel pads are honestly pretty revolutionary. According to Typemaster, the main purpose of these 16 gel pads is to absorb vibrations so the case doesn't become a resonance chamber. Additionally, one of the second properties of this gel is that it absorbs pressure really well, and overall makes it a breeze to type on. As you can see here, I have the stainless steel plate, and Typemaster will also offer additional plates and PCB options. The default will be anodized aluminum, however, you could also get stainless steel, brass, palm, or polycarbonate. The plates also come pre-notched, so they fit onto the gel pads easily. That way, you could swap your plate out really quickly. Also, as you can see here, there's a real shiny shiny Typemaster logo on the steel weight. I would say overall, the build quality of the Typemaster is pretty incredible. And as someone that really loves 75%, this doesn't leave much to be desired. Part of what makes this board feel so hefty is the stainless steel weight, or in some cases aluminum. It's secured with four screws and pops out pretty easily. It comes engraved with Typemaster lettering on one side and the Typemaster logo on the other side. Now you're probably asking, oh, why would you ever want to pop the weight out? Well, obviously so you can weigh it. And holy cow, this thing is a bit of a chungo. It comes in right at around 1.6 pounds, or for you international goons, 722 grams. For reference, that's slightly more than two Gamma K K66s. Just in the weight. Anyways, let's talk a bit about the PCB. This board only comes with a soldered PCB option, however, it does have QMK and VIA support. The board also comes with a unified daughter board by AIO3. Typemaster claims that this gives you ESD protection, an overcurrent protection, and overvoltage protection. But honestly, I think they need a hot swap PCB option before the group by hits. Because I think the board looks really sleek and minimalist, I wanted to put these 9009 blanks on. These were sent to me for free by Kinetic Labs, and I honestly really like them. Sitting at Cherry Profile, these are Dye Sub PBT keycaps, and overall they're pretty decent quality, with pretty decent thickness. If you want to check these out and support the channel, click the link down below to visit Kinetic Labs. Anyways, we'll also be putting a different set of keycaps on, but stay tuned for that. I filmed all of this while streaming, and if you want to check out the VOD, you can click that link in the top right. 
These streams are brought to you by the Watering Hole Gang, and if you want to join the Watering Hole Gang, click that join button down below. By joining, you get an exclusive badge next to your name, exclusive emotes to use in my live streams, as well as an exclusive channel in Discord, where I post behind the scenes content. So from what Type Master told me, this board has been built out with tangerine switches that have been lubed with Crytox 205G0 and filmed. The stabilizers have also been lubed and pretty well fine-tuned. Also, which color combo for 9009 do you like best? Anyways, I think this board looks absolutely elegant and really, really gorgeous. My biggest gripe would be the chin bezel, which is just a bit too thick for my tastes. Anyways, the board sits at a really comfortable typing angle of 7.7 .7 degrees. First, I'm gonna give you a bit of a typing test on these Cherry Profile 9009 blanks. Stick around for the whole thing, cause I've got some more to show you later. Typing on this board is an incredibly interesting experience. The gel pads really absorb a lot of the shock from impact, so it ends up feeling quite cushioned. Now, I'd say that last sound test isn't quite representative of how the board could sound, as tangerines are a very high-pitched switch, and it used a stainless steel plate. Also, a feature of the gel is it absorbs a lot of the sound, and led to an overall more high-pitched sound than you would normally expect. I would have loved to have the opportunity to try different plates and different switches in this, However, my best solution at the time was to use these blue cat keycaps that I got from Idobao. These are MA profile, and honestly not the prettiest keycaps, but they did give quite a different sound signature to the board. My overall thoughts on this board is that it's pretty promising, and definitely something to look into. However, I personally wouldn't go with a stainless steel plate, or a stainless steel weight, as they seem a bit expensive and just give it too high pitched of a sound. I'd also really like to see a hot swap option for this, as I feel like it would make it fit into a really good niche. I'm going to leave you guys with another sound test, and if you're looking for a little bit more, check out Type Master's sound test as well in the description. Also, do a sound test of your own in the comments if you like this video, and remember to like and hit subscribe. Also, if you want to support the channel just a little bit more, consider hitting that join button down below. This will give you access to exclusive perks, fun emotes, and behind the scenes stuff in our Discord. This video took a bit longer than my normal videos, and it's because I've been going through a bit of a rough spot lately. I really appreciate your guys' support on Discord and stuff, and it's really meant the world to me. From the bottom of my heart, thank you.